Hey everybody, welcome back to the Storytime channel. My name is Steven and let's get into our stories of the day. Bank department manager wants me to work harder, not smarter. Circa 2010, I was working an afternoon's gig at a local bank in part to complete an internship class for my coursework. The job entailed running batches of checks through a massive check scanner, manually running a tape, using an old calculator called a 10 key, with a printing function to make sure the checks match the deposits, and then hopping over to a computer to correct any errors on the teller or customer's part when the deposits were made. After the bank closed, 3 p.m., I was also the one who would stay and print out customer statements and run a long list of processes on multiple machines to update everyone's accounts of the day's transactions, upload the information to the website, back up and run tapes on all of the bank's data, and sort and file through the end of day reports for the different department managers to review the next morning. I would then lock up the bank and go home. In hindsight, quite a bit of responsibility for a college student, but it was a hometown bank. Now, my manager was a classic Karen before the term existed. She managed through fear, tried to cover it with small talk and banter, and didn't like anyone to shine except herself in the department. My two co-workers, full-time bank employees, would always discuss how terrible it was to work for her full-time. Anyway, I was raised to be respectful and work my hardest, which to me meant trying to be as quick at my job as possible, thus saving the company time and money. The closing duties I described took anywhere from one and a half to four hours to complete, depending on which batch of statements were printing and how often the crappy printers jammed. After about a month of doing this every day, I realized much of this time was due to the checklist I had been trained with. It was doing one task at a time when, actually, more than one process could be done at once, many times way out of order of the list. But you had to understand everything's part to really see this. I set about making these efficiencies and brought my time down to half an hour to two and a half hours after two months. I thought this would make my manager happy, but nothing was said about me getting out of there faster, and so I just kept on doing my job as best as I could. Fast forward two more months and this bank is updating its servers to allow for real-time banking. Previously, unless I updated the website each night, balances and transactions wouldn't show up. They brought in two large server cases into the office I worked in, but it took another three to four weeks for the actual hardware to come in. Since the old servers were still installed, they set the empty towers right in the middle of our office. Now, our office was a very long room the statement printers on one side, and all the computers I had to work on each night at the other. Remember I said the printers jammed a lot? Well, with all the computers and servers on my end of the office, I never could hear the beep telling me they had jammed, but I could see the red error light. This had historically been my little check. Every few minutes I'd turn around to make sure the printers hadn't jammed. I made sure I did this because every minute they weren't printing was another minute I'd be working. The statements took longer to print than the rest of my duties combined. However, the way they placed the empty server towers blocked my view, forcing me to have to get up and walk halfway to the printers each time to make sure they weren't jammed. So I simply turned them 90 degrees. Since the front and backs were full of air ventilation holes, this allowed me to maintain my line of sight, saving me and the bank time. Once again, I thought I had a great idea. No one is using these yet and when they do, they won't be in that location anymore anyway. In hindsight, I should have known better. I came in around 2 p.m. after classes the next day and noticed the towers were turned back. I thought that was odd. Why would anyone turn them back? I asked my coworker and she told me the manager was pissed I had touched them without asking, which, as I've learned later in life, was fair enough. I asked had they being turned messed up some workflow I wasn't thinking of? But no, she hadn't even noticed them until about 11 a.m. when another employee mentioned they had been turned. So her reaction was pure malice for not having been asked. When she saw I had come in, she pulled me aside and asked aggressively why I had touched them. So thinking this was my chance to highlight my efficiencies, I told her all I had done in an effort to make the closing routine more efficient. That was evidently the wrong answer. I was instructed to do the checklist exactly how it was laid out with no changes whatsoever because that's how it's supposed to be. 
even though I had been doing it my quicker way for two months already with no downsides. With regard to the printer, she told me to stop being lazy and just get up and walk to it to check on it. Cue malicious compliance. I stopped caring about speed, followed the checklist to a T, and, unless I had somewhere to be, didn't worry about checking on the printer very often. If it was still printing after my closing checklist was done, I could always read or do homework at my desk. Wouldn't want to be efficient with the bank's payroll after all. Suffice to say, it went back to taking one and a half to four hours per night and costing the bank much more money in my checks. Good for me, I guess. Shortly after, I found a job working in an electronics department at a superstore and switched over with two weeks notice. There wasn't time to train a new person, so that manager had to take over the night routine until a new one could be found. During my last day, I took it upon myself to try and give her some constructive criticism in how her management style affected me and stopped me from caring about my job. I'm not sure if it was effective, but at least I got it off my chest. I ran into one of my former co-workers at the store a few months later and, evidently, someone else had out and out told my former manager she was a vile and mean person and she was probably going to heck for how she treated people. Part of her Karen persona was being very religious, and this seemed to have scared her into at least some meekness, at least according to my former co-worker. This lady seemed so stuck in her ways and stubborn and just wanted to like get back at everybody for no really good reason at all. For those of you that have worked a job with a manager that upset you like this, were you ever able to explain why like OP did to them? Let me know your side of the story in the comments section below. It looks good on paper. So this was a long time ago in a workplace I try very hard to block out of my memory, but this was one of the great situations that I remember. This place was a warehouse for an automotive assembly plant where we warehouse workers would place parts into order on carts so they can be used on the production line in the order the cars are being built. This process, when done perfectly, is very efficient and makes the line run smoothly. However, nothing is ever perfect and this process can also make things run very poorly. This is one of those times. It is important to note that the warehouse is staffed by a different company than what runs the assembly plant and, while things are normally calm between the two companies, situations like this tend to get a bit heated with the warehouse company facing penalties for screw-ups. Background One of the areas where we sequence the parts for the lines comes from a group of people who put the parts how they were supposed to be on a cart. That cart is loaded into a trailer. The trailer is brought to the plant, unloaded, and the carts are sent to the line, while empty carts are loaded back onto the trailer and sent back to our warehouse. This system works pretty well, but there is some room for improvement. Process manager Doofus decides that he has the answer to this problem in the form of a new way to load and unload the trucks and goes about telling all of the people in this department to do things his way. No attempt to revise the standard process, just do it his way. Now the people who work this area know what they are doing. They do this job all day long and can see where the doofus method is going to have the materials loaded in a fashion that will waste a large amount of time. Upon pointing this out, doofus angrily waves their concerns away and spouts the now famous lines, It looks good on paper, so it will work just fine. He then proceeds to stand around to make sure that things are done his way and when things start to fall behind due to his error, shouts at the people for not following his scheme. He then leaves for lunch with the promise that he will be back and if they follow his process exactly, things will get on track and improve. Malicious Compliance Now, the doofus method is not the standard method for doing this job. We have process manuals printed that show the mostly ideal method of doing things, and deviation from that should be limited to only processes that prove to be effective in reducing time, as seen by process analysts. Everyone knows that the doofus method is not going to work, so standard compliance would be to go back to the process listed in the manual. But this is malicious compliance. Everyone involved in this process decided to follow the doofus method exactly, despite the fact that everyone knows where this will end up. As predicted, things start falling behind more and more and when doofus returns, 
He finds a department that is on the verge of shutting the line down. He begins yelling at anyone and everyone for not following his precious method in response to any challenges with, It looks good on paper. It has to be something you all are doing. The fallout. As things start getting more and more backed up, the manager at the plant has noticed things are not as they should be. She drives over to our warehouse to find out what is going on and why this department that normally does not have issues is having issues. Line manager says, why are things getting so backed up over here? The line is close to stopping. Doofus says, we started a new system of doing things and someone is not following the new process. Is this the standard process for this area? Why am I just now hearing of this? It's a new method that I came up with. It should be saving time. Well, it's not. Go back to the standard process. But it looks good on paper. If we can find out what is happening, we can get it fixed. Line manager in increasing irritation. We don't have time to figure out where your idea went wrong. We need to get moving. Go back to the standard process. Doofus increasingly flustered. But the paper... At this point, the line manager has had enough and cuts him off with, I don't care about your freaking paper. Go back to the standard process. Doofus retreats to his office. Everyone goes back to the normal process, and the situation is sorted out within an hour. We later find out that Doofus has been reamed by our facility manager, our quality manager, the assembly plant manager, the assembly process manager, and just about everyone else that holds even the slightest authority over him, since he never discussed with anyone what he was doing, what he was planning, and never had permission to do what he did. The phrase, it looks good on paper, has since become a running joke between the workers there, and Doofus was fired a few months later due to unrelated issues. There's a lot of things I could write on paper that looks good on paper that is either unrealistic or is very short-sighted. You can come up with a bunch of ideas and maybe they do seem like genuinely good ideas, but I think it's very impractical to right away shove this brand new idea into a warehouse system that on the surface was already functional. I think anytime you involve yourself with something like that, you need to have foresight on almost every aspect of it as obviously some of the workers could see right through it right away it was just stuff that they couldn't see themselves changing channels is a turn okay so my brother and i are always fighting and this quarantine is making everything tenser so the agreement we had before was that if you watch one movie i'll watch one movie same thing for shows story so one day i was just browsing the channels looking for something to watch then, my brother, annoyed that I still haven't chosen anything, decided to whine to my mother. He kept on saying that whenever I chose a channel, it was a turn. My mom, annoyed at his whining, said, fine, new rule. Okay then. So the next day, I pretended to be asleep, but I had a pen and a small notepad with my watch with me. I then waited for him to turn on the TV. I then took a list of all the 11 channels he browsed through. I then waited until yesterday to put my plan into action. With my compiled list of the 11 channels all with the date and time, I made microwave popcorn and got comfortable. After my first movie, my brother demanded that I give him the remote, but I didn't. He then went to our mom and whined. I then showed her the list and reminded her of the new rule. My brother then tried to contest the rule, but I reminded him that he was the one to make the rule in the first place. My mother relented and said that it was my turn for the next 11 movies slash shows. I watched all of the Avengers movies and a few episodes of the Grand Tour. He was so upset when I decided to watch Infinity War and Endgame. That's it. My short but sweet malicious compliance. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. They're the one that made the rule. They gotta live with the results. My mother told me to pick all my stuff from her place, so I did it. The relationship between me and my mother is really bad, and always has been. I might tell about that later in a different community, but here's some backstory. My mother is very narcissistic, so every fight between us has always been my or my father's fault. Last year I cut ties with her, but it hasn't been that easy. I have also a sister who is still in connection with her. Their relationship is a big part of my mother's and my bad connection. But enough of that now. Julia is my sister and Claire is my mother. 
names are obviously changed. I've collected some stuff from Claire's place before, but I didn't want the rest of my stuff to be there anymore since my official address is in my dad's place now. I called Julia to go through my stuff in our call, which she did. I was going to pick the stuff that I wanted to be at my new address later that evening. It was Thursday. Because of her and Claire's good relationship, Julia wanted to confirm that it was okay to Claire. That didn't go so well. Claire flipped completely to Julia because I still had a key to Claire's place. I ended the call with Julia so they could sort the fight. In the call with Julia, we had gathered up a big bag of stuff. Julia got really emotional because Claire yelled to her because Claire was angry to me. After midnight, I called Julia and Claire has already gone to sleep. We talked about the situation and she told me that I had to get all my stuff from there and return the key to Claire's new partner. If I wanted some stuff, I would have to get them all. After that, I decided to call my dad about that, and he said that we will get the stuff later with a trailer. So it's Sunday now, and Julia was at Claire's place alone, so we went to get the stuff. Claire told Julia to say to me that I had to get the stuff when Claire's new partner was home, because I couldn't give the key, which I still had, to Julia. Claire's partner wasn't around, but we still went to get the stuff. They are my stuff, and I should be allowed to get them. If you don't agree, please tell that to me in the comments. Maybe Claire meant with all my stuff, a huge box of my belongings, but we took it all. My desk, shelves, school books, nightstand, notice board, dishes, old toys, the box with my stuff, and a huge part of my baby pictures and keepsakes. Claire will be very pissed and sad, but honestly I don't care anymore because she has hurt me mentally countless times. I also left the key on the table. I didn't give it to my sister. I'm just glad that there was a moment where OP and their father could go to this place, get all of their stuff without having to deal with Claire at all. Dinner time compliance. Back when I was a kid, we had a rule where you weren't allowed to start eating food before we had said the blessing. The penalty for doing so was having to wait one minute to start eating after the blessing for each bite you had taken before the blessing. I hated this rule because I didn't like waiting to eat. What I figured out is if I ate my whole dinner before the blessing, I wouldn't have any food to have to wait to eat after the blessing. I got about halfway through my plate before my mom figured out my plan and the jig was up. But it was totally worth it. I get OP's plight and I get that they were a kid, but I feel like even out of politeness you should be able to hold out for the grace. I don't think it's usually a very long process. But with that being said, that's all the stories we have for today. So what I want to know is, which of these stories was your personal favorite of the day and why? Let me know which story and why in the comments section down below. And thank you all so very much for watching and listening to the Storytime channel today. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video from the Storytime channel. Thank you all again so very much for watching and listening to the Storytime channel.